Um, if you have seen my other videos, then you have never seen my face. This is my face. <laughs> um, I needed to buy a new sewing machine um, because the other one I just pounded, I beat it up, and um, I decided that what I was going to do was do an unboxing for um, the new sewing machines as a beginner, beginner video. So um, what we're going to do for people who are extremely beginners, we're going to um, undo this box that I got. Okay, it's a project runway. I love brother. Um, I teach sewing classes and I've seen a lot of people with singer sewing machines. I personally don't like them. I have owned brother machines for the last 20 years. Um, so I did, you know, I wanted the same machine I had. They didn't have it. So I got the next version, um, which is another brother. So um, I won't go into talking about, you know, their functions um, in detail. That's not what this particular video is. This is um, to show you how to set up your machine in case some of you don't know. Um, and for the new people that haven't seen videos or are just searching, that's what you'll find out here. Okay, so I'm gonna open the box. <laughs> okay. I don't know if some of you have seen um, my Instagram. Um, my Instagram is at sewn by Nikki. But if you've seen my Instagram account, then you've seen me because I put pictures on there from Megacon. So if you haven't seen me um, on Instagram, go ahead and subscribe there. You get to see what um, some of the things that I'm making. And if you see some things on there that you want to learn how to make, then um, you can message me and just say, hey, can you do a video and show us how you make this? Okay, and, um, and I'll do it because those things there I make often. I have several tables in my sewing room um, all around this craft room. So, um, yeah, using this one. Okay, let's see. I'm going to um, power cord. We'll talk about all of these. I'm excited. It's like Christmas when you get a new toy. Owner's manual, which, to be totally honest, I don't look at. Hmm. Foot pedal. All right. I live in Florida. Um, I'm inside all the time, but I wear three quarters because um, we're in central, I'm in central air a lot and I get cold. So this is exactly how I sew. Um, I'm not dolled up. This is not a makeup video. <laughs> so, um, yep. What you see is how I am. How I am. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. My last sewing machine I got was, um, about four years ago, so almost four years. And the one I've had previously before that, it lasted about 15 years. But to be totally honest, the Project Runway that I just got rid of, um, I pounded it like a lot. So, um, and I decided it wasn't worth fixing, which is why I just decided they're cheap enough where you can go and get one and say, oh, okay, $145 that I've used for four years, the money is worth it. So, okay, this one's coming out. So excited. All right, so take the plastics off. Self-explanatory. Okay. I have right here, obviously, some cardboard. This is just to protect it when it's shipping. Okay, you can go ahead and take off that blue tape that's over the plates. That's obviously to keep the cardboard in place so that it doesn't, um, so that your uh, plate doesn't get broken. 
So, and I love this tape. It doesn't leave marks. Okay. Go ahead and take your tape off your top from your um, top spool threader. Okay. Well, look at that. It came with a bobbin filled already. Hmm. Okay. Um, your foot pedal. So we're going to open up that foot pedal. Something that I like that brother does, um, because I have several machines, I like that they show you on the back of the foot pedal what it, the model is, what it goes to. Because if you unplug your machines to store them and if you don't leave the foot pedal connected, you'll probably get confused as to which model the um, foot pedal goes with. But I've recently discovered that they're universal because I've used some of the um, foot pedals with other two machines that I have. So, hint, hint. If you lose a foot pedal, you don't have to buy a whole new machine. Okay, so, foot pedal, um, what we're going to do, I'm just dropping it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this into the back of the machine here. Okay, that's pretty simple. Okay, we have the power cord right here. The power cord, obviously it comes wrapped up. I'm gonna cut these, these are not fabric scissors. No way would I ever use my fabric scissors to be cutting um, through plastic and cardboard and, and straps. <laughs> so make sure if you are unboxing, don't use your fabric scissors. Okay. Okay, so power cord, and I'm going to take this plug and I'm going to plug it into the side of the machine. Side of the machine right there. Those are the only two plugs you'll be using, okay? We're not going to turn it on right now at this moment. This is your on and off switch, on and off switch, okay? Okay, I'll plug it in in just a moment. Okay, so I've never found a reason to keep these. Garbage. I have enough stuff going on in my room. Okay, so the kit comes with some, um, the sewing kit comes with some basic tools that I see right here, and I'll explain to you what they are. They're pretty standard in um, all of the machines, okay? So um, sometimes you, they actually come inside of here, and you, oh, you do get a nice little bag. Look at that. Um, okay, I was going to say sometimes they come inside of here, inside of a little pouch, which we'll talk about. So it fits nicely inside and it slides onto the arm of your sewing machine. Brothers, the newer versions, they're all pretty much the same with a drop in bobbin and this little nice area here um, to keep small things in the compartment. Okay, I'll take this out for just, just for now. Let's talk about these first. Okay, this is basically a starter kit. Okay. So this machine comes with a seam ripper. Okay, this is when you make a mistake when you are, um, I'll put it here just so you can see it. It's a seam ripper. Um, you can use this when you're first starting out. No need to go out and buy another one. I have several of them. Once you do get sewing, you'll want longer ones and they have more fancier ones. You can start off with this. This is used to take out seams, to take out stitchings when you make a mistake. Absolute must. No one is perfect. This right here is a little brush. And um, you can't see it right now, but it's a little brush. Um, has tiny bristles, soft bristles, and this is what's used to clean inside of the machine. Um, you should always clean inside of your machine. I'll show you how to do a simple, quick version of that. Um, you should do it at least once a month, okay? They say to do it after every time you sew, but depends on fabrics, um, what you need. It comes with some bobbins, okay? It comes with um, extra little bobbins for you, which is great. So you don't have to run out and buy any if you're just starting. And this is for your bottom thread, okay? It comes with several different walking feet, several different feet um, for your machine, okay? These are just additional pieces that go on to the bottom of um, your needle 
um, feet that you would use for various reasons. And on the back of the box, they tell you that. Um, oh, I'm sure you can find a video on that to let you know um, what they're used for. Okay. This right here, um, this is when you need to replace a needle. Okay. When you need to replace a needle, there are um, right here. Let's get, I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see. This right here, this part, it's straight. It goes into the machine right here into the side and you can turn this it's sort of like um, righty tidy lefty loosey you use this to turn um, up and down and what it, I mean turn it around left and right and what it does it loosens and then your needle actually comes out okay so that's what this piece is for um, and then you actually just put your needle back Okay, I have fat fingers. I'm probably blocking the view, but you can play around with it. Okay, and then you turn it a little bit. And of course, you use this to tighten up that, um, that screw there. Okay. Okay, so now my needle is in. So if you didn't know how to change your needle, that's how you change a needle. Okay, all right. Um, let's see what else you really need to be concerned with this right here. Um, these are different sizes and what these do, um, is that when you put your spool of thread, hold it on. <laughs> when you put your spool of thread, um, on to the sewing machine onto the top, I just started a new one. Your spool of thread goes on. And then depending on how big or how wide and thick, um, how many yards you've purchased for the spool, you can use, determine which one you would like, which cover, which cap you would like to go on. And it prevents the spool from falling off as you're sewing because then it will jiggle. Okay. And then that will affect the tension. So that's what these are. Okay. And spools come in a variety of different, um, a variety of different yards. So that's why they give you several different ones. Okay, so you have several of those. Okay, um, this right here, um, I don't use this, but this right here is for an extra spool. If you lose this one, um, that's not what that's for. <laughs> if you lose this one, this is just a replacement for a shorter, thinner. Usually the embroidery, um, the embroidery thread goes on these. Okay. This right here, once you get to sewing, you get excited that you can sew. This is um, what helps you. This is for making buttonholes. Okay. So, um, of course, you can find videos for that, but that's what this is for. This is the same thing as it attaches onto the machine um, right here. And depending on what size button you have, when you put it in the slot, this will actually adjust itself um, to, in order to make your hole that you're creating. Okay. Your machine comes with extra needles. Um, you do want to make sure it comes with universal needles. You do want to make sure that you purchase needles according to the fabric that you're using. Uh, you cannot use the same kind of needle for silk that you would use for jeans. Okay. Um, it just won't work. Okay. You, um, the needle, the thread won't go through the fabric and, um, you won't be happy. So these are just different types of needles. Okay. All right, so the fun part about this, you can shove this all back inside. Um, over time, um, over time, you accumulate a lot of sewing. Uh, I'm not going to put the bobbin pieces in there. You accumulate a lot of sewing accessories, and they won't fit back inside of this portion here. But for the meantime, just for now, I'm just going to put it in here to show you because some people don't have whole rooms. Some people sew at their dining room table and um, let's be real, you want to keep your partner or spouse happy and not have a big mess. So stick it back in there, okay? And then slide it out, let me put the top. Stick it in there, put it on the arm, slide down, that's all.
okay just so you know this on your machine is so that if you're sewing cuffs or anything that you need to wrap around here that's why this is removable it's a removable arm okay all right so um let's just see the basics um i'll just um, talk about how to thread the machine for people that don't know and are beginners um I'm just going to take this out of here because I'll show you how to thread the bobbin for people that don't know. Okay. Okay. Um, so starting with the basics, plug it in. If I'm changing a needle, I've gotten to the point where I know how to change my needle and won't poke myself with the machine on. Don't ever change your needle with your machine on. Turn off your machine. Um, it's safer. Okay. So I've turned it on. That switch is on the side. This switch right there, it's on the side. Um, if you're looking at your machine, I'll tell you that there's a lot of different stitches on here. These are pretty cool for once you do start sewing and you start making designs on top of the fabric. You can play with them yourself. I will tell you how to change them. Um, when you change them, if you look right here at your um, the latest versions of Brothers, they're all the same. So if you look here at your screen, it says zero, zero. Well, um, let me see if I put my light on for a minute. I don't know if that's helping. Okay, so I put my, um, I turned it on. It automatically goes to zero, zero. What you want to make sure of when you're sewing, okay? Needle position, your needle position will change based upon what numbers you have there. If you have this machine or any of the Project Runways, zero, zero is the best place to start sewing. If you change it to zero, one for your needle to be in the middle, you'll sometimes probably won't remember. You'll turn on the machine and you forget to turn it to zero one. Okay, so um, speaking of the zero zero, if I'm looking here and if I wanna do a zigzag stitch on an elastic or um, if I'm sewing in an elastic or want to, um, if I'm sewing a pair of pajamas and on the seams, if I want to um, put a zigzag stitch on the end, zigzags, mean like when you're doing skirts or something that it will allow your fabric to stretch okay so what i do is i'd go it says zero three so that tells me i need to change my set my, change my settings to zero three so i'm just gonna push oh hold on this right here so this is for the left number this is for the right number i'm just gonna push the plus button so now it says zero one when it changes to zero two and listen carefully because when I push it one more time to zero three, even if you keep pushing, you'll hear the needle moving. You hear this? Okay, so the needle moves. Okay, so now it knows it needs to do zigzag. So right here on the screen, it says letter J. Okay, it says letter J right on top. There's a foot there. Um, there's a foot and then underneath it, it says letter J. That means that this piece that's on the bottom I'm just going to take it off right now. I'll show you. It means that you need to have this one that says letter J. Okay? So on the machines, 00, 01, 02, 03, 04, four, they always use the J um, foot. And it's pretty, this is the universal foot. Okay? So I will show you how to put that back on um, in just a moment. Okay? But... That's for you to see. I'm looking, I'm doing it opposite, facing the opposite way. So that's for you to see. So now you know how to change your stitching. So either plus or minus. If you change it to one three for stitch 13, right? You'll see what that looks like. It will tell you, oh, that still uses J. Okay, let's go to two, three. I'm gonna go to um, 25. Stitch number 25. It's a squiggly line. Well, it tells you, um, walking foot in and what that means is you're gonna go into that bag and you're going to take out the foot you're gonna take out that foot that says in that's what you're going to do okay you have several of them all of the stitches that are here they give you the actual feet that you need for that stitch 
they're not going to put the stitches on here and not give you the feet. Okay, you don't have to go by extras, it's here. So whenever you change the number, if you see something you like, flowers or anything, just match it up with the foot. Okay, to the right, I'm gonna go back to um, the basic common stitch that everyone that, you know, that's used for straight stitching. So I have it on zero, zero. I know that my foot is J, so I'm going to put this one back on before I sew. And it has 2.5. 2.5, this tells you how wide you want your stitches to be. What that means is um, it lets you know the thickness. I'm trying to look for some, I'm trying to see something for you to show you. Um, oh, let me grab, I'll just grab this. <laughs> okay, so let's take a look. 2.5 means it's going to show you how wide these stitches are, okay? So if you want these stitches, I don't ever recommend sewing on 2.5 because if you make a mistake and if you have to take these stitches out, 2.5 is so tiny, it's really hard to pick them out. 3.0, this right here is 3.0. I don't know if you can see them, but 3.0, 3.0, that's a really good stitch. Okay, they're small but not tiny where you can't um, pick them apart if you need to. And they look neat, they look clean, they look professional. Okay, so it's a good distance, it's not a wide stitch. Okay, so 3.0. The number underneath on the bottom right here, this tells you um, how far apart you want the spacing of those stitches. Okay, and that changes as well. So you would just, you know, um, push up and down. Play with the machine when you first get your machine. Just put a scrap piece of fabric underneath it, play with the stitches wide apart, do one row of each of them, and you'll see. When you push this here, if you're using thick fabric, the stitch length goes up, okay? When you're using thick fabric, um, let's say for instance, flannel, you might because flannel is thick, and not only that, but it tends to have, um, What's the word I want to say? <laughs> um, fibers that pop out of it. Okay, so don't sew on 2.5, you know, or, you know, 3.0. 3.5 might be good for the flannel. Okay, it helps it also smooth through the needle, um, through, the, through the arm and get the needle in and out quicker than it's trying to struggle. Okay, so um, let's talk now about, oh, let's put this foot back on. When you wanna put a foot, okay, this right here, this part here, needs to go directly underneath um, the, hmm, thinking what's the word. Anyway, I don't have a word for it. <laughs> All right, so I have the foot off. Um, again, that's the J foot, and in order to put a foot on, Look for this um, on your foot. You're going to slide it right underneath. I'm going to call that thing the claw, okay? So um, there's a lever right over here, a gray foot lever. I'm going to just let it go. Um, might take a little bit of maneuvering, but it grabbed onto it like a claw. You lift it up and um, that's how you um, raise and lower your walking foot. That's how you attach a walking foot. Okay, so um, the only other thing I'm going to show you right now for this video, I'm going to show you how you um, how you load the bobbin and spool because then you'll get to just play around um, with your fabrics and um, just practice with the machine. Um, the most important thing that you need to know, um, this right here, this dial, this is tension. I love it on three. I always sew with it on three. And to be totally honest, if you put it on three, I have never, ever, ever changed my tensions in years. Okay. Um, three is the magic number. Okay. Spool is on. Um, I'm putting the spool on. Put the spool on. And then, oh, I put the, um, I put the holder inside. Grab one of those, um, grab one of those holders, okay? You're going to put it right on the end to hold your spool of thread, 
Okay, grab your thread. There are numbers up here and I know it, it looks confusing. That's why I'm showing you. Grab your thread. It goes in the tension guide number one. I'll do that again. It's almost like flossing your teeth. There's a little hook there. Get it in that hook. Put it, follow these guidelines here. This is another tension guide. Follow it down, that's number two. You're going down to number three. Lift it up. There's a hook inside of here, you'll see it. If you hug the wall with your thread, you'll automatically hook onto it, I promise. Okay, go around, hug the wall on the left side with your thread, bring it down, bring it down. And now this is gonna be the important part. There's a little hook here, you can't see it. This is your last tension guide. Use it to um, hold the thread. Uh, I'm gonna get it. Okay, it's actually this side. Um, my machine, my other machine was on the left side. I'll do that again just so you can see it goes on easier. Look at that, it holds it into place really easy. Okay, so then now what you're going to do is you're just going to Oh, drop something. You're just going to, it's always easier to thread your knee, um, to put your thread through the needle if, um, if you have a fresh cut. So just thread it. That's all. Some machines have the automatic threaders. Okay. Um, after you thread it, put it through the little space there and just tuck it towards the back. And this is where what you're going to do is take your bobbin. They gave us a new one um, with the machine. There it is. Of course, you want matching. Um, I'm just showing you for this purpose, but you want matching colors on the top and the bottom for your threads. Okay. Um, purple is on the top, which means that purple will come out on top here if I sew this. But on the bottom of this, if I turn this over, this would actually be white. That's the difference in the threads, okay? The, um, the top um, thread from the spool will come out on the top um, of your fabric facing you, and whatever color you have in your bobbin will come, come underneath the bottom of the fabric piece that you're sewing, okay? You still wanna have matching colors unless you intentionally um, choose different. This is the easiest thing with the new machines, guys. Look, drop it in, take this string, Bring it around, curve it. There's a little hook here. Bring it, follow the guides. It's pretty simple. And look at this, it cuts it for you. That's all. Put your top back on. Never sew with that open. You don't wanna get it all dusty in there, okay? But, and you can start sewing. That's it, you can start sewing. So, um, when you do start sewing every day, what you want to do is actually just dust inside of here. This is where you'll use the little you'll use the little brush that it comes with. Ah. You'll use the little brush that it comes with. That's in here. Okay? That's a whole nother video, cleaning and maintenance of your video, but this thing comes off. Okay? And when this thing comes off, right? clean inside of here every day this comes out that's a whole nother video cleaning your machine okay all right but you're ready to actually start sewing now so you can check out some of the beginner videos that i have um or you can learn to stray so stray some so um sew some straight lines um, and um just have fun with the machine okay so i'm going to put up some new videos today so you can just you know, click on over and watch the other videos. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a message down below. Follow me. I try to talk so that you understand. I try not to speed through everything. I try to just give you a lot of information so you can replay. Um, that's all. You can follow me on Instagram. Instagram, I usually just post videos of what I'm sewing. Um, my Instagram, if you follow me, is at Sewn by Nikki. Um, you can check me out on Facebook at So So Well, or you can subscribe to the channel here and, um, you know, take a look at uh, beginner tutorial videos. That's it. I will see you next time.